Hello, I'm Maurice, and I'm back with my antique knitting machine project. So last time, I had unseized the cylinder from the machine, and then done some machining on the cylinder so that it could rotate freely in the machine. Now, I have gotten some of the machine knitting needles in, and I'm going to be talking about the next steps with the uh, machine, and we'll see what kind of progress we can make with these new needles. I've been sort of focusing on just getting it working. So I did take it apart cl and cleaned everything a little bit. I didn't do a huge amount of cleaning though because I want to make sure that I understand how everything works and make sure I can get it functioning. But uh, I didn't come with uh, several of the parts I needed. It didn't come with weights. It didn't come with a mast. It didn't come with any knitting needles. So uh, the most important thing to get get it, you know, test it out and working is to get some of these knitting needles. So these are machine knitting needles and they have these little arms. I don't know. Here, let's see if I can show it over here better. They have these little uh, flaps that are, I forget what they're called. I saw that, but they have a little metal piece that like hinges back and forth. And that that's important for this kind of uh knitting machine. So I ordered a bunch of these knitting needles. They weren't that expensive. I think I got a um, hundred of them for $50 from, here's a package of them. So I got them from angoravalley.com. Uh, it's easy to work with them. I just sent them a picture of my machine just to verify that the uh, these needles would work with the machine and they got back to me and said, yep, these will, these will work great. So it removed a lot of the uh, unknowns. I mean, there are cheaper places I could have purchased them from, but I just liked working with them uh, during this testing phase of this machine just to, because I, I got some uh, confirmation that they were going to work. And uh, sure enough, they fit perfectly. So I was very happy with that. The machine uh, rotates pretty easily now. Um, and as you can see there, it's um, raising the needles, but I don't have everything put together. So let me put the camera in a tripod and I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, so now that I have both hands free, I can show you what I've been doing with these needles. So you, there's a, a cam back here that uh, basically raises and lowers the needles. That's sort of right here. Um, so you can't put the needles in where that is, but um, on the opposite side of where that is, I can just insert needles. They go in pretty easily like this. Uh, there's this spring that goes like this, and it just kind of fits into that groove. And then that holds all the needles in. And with the needles, you can raise them up like this, and then the machine's not going to activate them, or you can keep them lower like this, and the machine will activate them when the cam goes past. So I found out one issue is when I inserted all the needles in here, it became much harder to turn. Uh, without the needles, it turned quite smoothly, but once I added the needles in, it became much harder to turn. Ah. And it does do the right thing with the needles. It raises them and lowers them like it should. Um, but uh, there's some issues with this cylinder, I'm starting to realize, beyond just um, getting it to rotate. Um, one of them is that um, one of the screws that sort of holds this side down um, became stripped. And I could fix that by putting a larger screw in, so I'm not too worried about that. But that's sort of why... I'm holding down this side as I'm doing some of these experiments. But um, yeah, it definitely uh, raises and lowers the needles like it should. So it is working, but it becomes, it's very clunky and it's sort of hard to rotate. So I started looking into what was causing that. And um, basically what's happening here is that um, some of these, whoops. So here's what I found. I found that basically some of the grooves, uh, as the cylinder is expanded, 
Uh, I thought, you know, just sanding it down and getting it to spin freely on its own would be good enough, but um, it's expanded in such a way that some of these slots have gotten tight. So like this one in particular is a good example. This one, like I can't even get the hook in there. So obviously when this hook is sliding up and down in that uh, s slot, there's going to be a lot of extra friction. And some of them are really easy to, for it to slide up and down in. Some of them are kind of medium and then other ones are like really tight. So if I want to use this cylinder, what I'd have to do is I'd have to go in and widen all of these grooves. And that's something I could do. It's going to be very labor intensive and it's probably not something I'm going to do right now. I think what I'm going to investigate is uh, whether I can 3D print a cylinder and do some testing with that and sort of see how a 3D printed cylinder works. Uh, it won't be very hard for me to design a replacement cylinder. I'm pretty good at CAD programs and um, I have a 3D printer. So I can I can easily do that and just sort of see what a good cylinder will work like uh, when it's 3D printed. And if I'm not happy with that, you can certainly buy uh, replacement cylinders, which would be really high quality. Or maybe I'll go through and repair this cylinder further. I, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do, but I did want to give an update on sort of where I'm at because I do think that this is going to take some time and it's a big roadblock. Like I was hoping I'd get these hooks and this whole thing would just sort of work well, but the cylinder has expanded so much that it's not just a problem with fitting the cylinder into the frame of the uh, machine knitter. It's actually causing the needles not to fit properly. And I'm, I'm sure other people have run into this problem. Uh, and I just sort of wanted to document it and give everybody an update that I'm having this kind of a problem. And now I have to decide, you know, whether I want to, uh, well, I think I'm going to try 3D printing a cylinder and see how, how that works. Uh, and then based on what how that works, I'll let you know how that goes. I may either try to repair this one myself some more, or there are places online where you can buy new metal replacement cylinders. And that would be the best option, but it's also going to be the most pricey. So I'll start out with um, the 3D printing of a cylinder and sort of uh, see how that goes. So I'll post another video when I've had some time to design a 3D printed cylinder and um, test it. And uh, I'll let you know how that's going. But so far, I still think that like the bones of this machine are, are really good. And I'm just adding a, um, just kind of having fun learning how the different parts work. And I'm, I'm learning a ton. So um, as I've mentioned in past videos, the end goal of this project is more to learn if I want to uh, design and sell one of these machine knitters, a modernized one. And, uh, you know, I still haven't decided that, but um, I'm definitely learning a lot and enjoying this process. So I'll keep making these videos and I'll keep you all updated. Thanks for watching.